As a fellow business owner, I want your undivided attention right here, right now, only for a few minutes, I promise you. I have a couple questions for you and they're gonna sound stupid and they're gonna sound like, why the hell are you asking me that question? But the question is this, do you want your business to survive or do you want it to thrive for many years to come? Are you just playing around with your business? I'm asking these questions specifically because I've had multiple conversations with many business owners in many different industries from the trades to uh, providers, doctors, cosmetic surgeons, chiropractors, dog walkers, uh, goodness, who else? Uh, car detailers, you name it. I've had conversations with many different business owners of many different industries, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And it seems like so many business owners are just playing around and they're wondering why they're broke. So many business owners are just working from paycheck to paycheck or deal to deal and hoping that they can make next, roles, next month's payroll, working from quarter to quarter and not really working on the business and treating your business like a true business. And listen, I'm here to tell you, chances are it's not your fault. You haven't been taught the proper way to actually manage a business. I have no doubt that you're absolutely brilliant at what it is that you do as a bathroom remodeler or a cosmetic surgeon or whatever it is that you do. I've just found across the board that most business owners are doing what they feel they need to be doing as a business owner, but completely missing the mark. And there's a couple reasons for that, and I'm going to share that with you here today. I'm going to share with you how to find your strategic advantage. What is your strategic advantage so that you can have an advantage not over your competition, which does help sometimes, but you don't need to have advantage over your competition. What you really need is you need to have an advantage over the economy so that if a pandemic happens or a hurricane or a tornado comes through your area and decimates your business or other businesses in your area and the income level goes down and all this kind of stuff and then your business isn't as relevant or if any number of things happen like in 2008 with the real estate market when stuff like this happens i want you to have a strategic advantage over the economy or over any natural situation that would happen so that your business can continue to thrive. And there's a couple ways to do that. Well, there's multiple ways to do that. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to see what your competitive advantage is. Now, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm not gonna get a whole lot into it because you can Google my name, Wally Carmichael. I literally take up like the first five pages of Google from all the stuff that I've done over the years. And you can go check me out and I highly encourage that you do so. I also encourage you to do so for anybody else if you're gonna go out and hire anybody for your business to help coach you or consult you in anything that you do in life, not just your business. So let me get into this real quick. My name is Wally Carmichael. I'm a business and marketing strategist. I'm also a retired army medic. This is my amazing family right here. This picture was taken in Hawaii. Uh, we lived there for a total of 10 years. This little guy down here was his fifth birthday and we took him out on a pirate ship and had just a blast. We love doing stuff like this. So this is my beautiful wife. I met her in my first duty station when I was stationed in Panama in Central America. And we've been married for almost 30 years. My oldest is right here. He is currently serving in the army. Uh, in, in Texas. My middle son, he's currently serving in the Navy and doing amazing things. Absolutely loves his job there. And then my little guy here, he's 11. He's here with me. In fact, he's a couple rooms over right now and um, doing this in school because, you know, we're doing everything from home now. This is me. These are obviously not my kids. This was me in Bolivia many, many years ago in my 20s. I was uh, supporting, as a medic, I was supporting the engineers. We were drilling water wells in Bolivia. Uh, we, we drilled 27 water wells. I think 12 of them were free flowing, meaning they didn't need a pump. And we just worked around the clock. Well, as a medic, I spend a lot of time sitting around because I can't work. If I get hurt, who's going to help me? I was the only medic on site. So I get a chance to talk with all the kids. These young men and women, I think a couple of, this one's a little girl. Um, they were my Spanish teachers. They taught me Spanish, which was really cool. I just love those guys. This is me in Uzbekistan with the 82nd Airborne Division, uh, third of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, Strike Hold. And this, 
that's me on the uh, far left. And then the other guy in the Maroon Beret is one of my non-commissioned officers. And then the tall bald guy, that's a Russian major. The other tall guy is a Russian uh, non-commissioned officer. They obviously sent the best of the best. You should have seen these guys. They were all huge, man. Anyway, we jumped into Uzbekistan, uh, and then we did some operations in Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, and uh, goodness, um, all the stands. We were just all over the place, and there were multiple different na nations down there. So I've had the pleasure of actually visiting or living in 23 countries on five continents um, throughout my military career and just personal travel. So about four years ago, I started the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community, where I have amazing conversations with men and women who are living a life of abundance in their own right and somehow paying it forward to the community and in some cases to the world, like Jeff Hoffman, who I just recently had a conversation with, who is the guy who started Priceline about 20 years ago an amazing individual. So I also have a podcast called Business Owner Growth, When You Grow, Your Business Grows. And I have a ghostwritten book uh, that you can pick up at my website. This is the top eight strategies in uh, No BS Business Breakthrough. And these are the top eight strategies that I generally use with most business models, but I'm going to show you some stuff today that's way beyond even this book. But you can pick up that book at my website, wallycarmichael.com. Just a little bit more about me before this gets away from me here. Um, people ask me, Wally, how in the world does a army medic end up being a business and marketing strategist? Well, I was a strategist in the military during most of my career, especially the latter part of my career. And I strategized medical assets, personnel, equipment all over uh, whatever region I was in, whether it was in Iraq or it was in Bosnia, Bolivia, or even in Garrison, the uh, whole Pacific region from Hawaii, all the islands of Hawaii, uh, Japan, Korea, Alaska, and parts of the United, um, the latter part of the United States. So I'm a strategist. That's what I do. And I absolutely love strategizing um, operations. So it just makes sense for me to strategize business operations and business marketing because I absolutely am obsessed with business and marketing. And I just study it. Uh, I learn every from every client that I get a chance to work with, from every business owner I talk to. I really just love it. And so I founded the Abundance and Prosperity Business Mastery, taking off from the Men of Abundance podcast, and that evolved into what I do today. So that's just a little bit about me. Again, you can find out more about me. Uh, we'll get into a conversation at some point, and we can get to know each other a little bit more. Let's get to the meat of this. This is the fun part. This is your competitive advantage. And this is where most business owners are truly missing the mark. And I'm gonna go start off a little bit shallow and then we're gonna go a lot deeper. This is your competitive advantage. You have to know the foundations of your business. You have to be, have, an, have a way to generate leads and you have to know how to generate leads. Once you have the foundation of your business, you're in the position to start receiving clients and customers and serving them. But once you start getting leads, and most businesses are not generating leads, let me give you a hint. Somebody calling your business and asking for a free consultation or somebody walking into your front door is not a lead. You have no way to, re to, to reach out to them and nurture them and give them, give them what they're looking for, which by the way, is information about your service and about your products. Then once you get a lead, if you, when you do, you have to know how to convert that lead to a paying customer. And when you convert that lead to a paying customer down here in the green, the conversions are how you serve that customer. Then the transactions are how you serve that customer multiple times. Then from transactions, you generate revenue. How do you turn that revenue into profits? Remember this and write this down right now. Revenue feeds your ego. Profits feed your family. That's extremely important to remember because of all the business owners that I talk to, I've talked to business owners that have, you know, Wally, I made $1.3 million in revenue last year that I reported to the IRS. Okay. How much was that? How much did you bring home? What was the net profit? $60,000, $80,000? What's the point? You have to know how to, how to fix those margins so that when you have high revenue, you can also have high profits. And many business consultants will tell you that you can grow your business or you can grow your profits, but you can't grow both. And it's BS. 
It's a damn lie. The bottom line is they just don't know how to do it. I want to show you how to do that. So foundations, I'm just going to briefly go through these real quick because we're going to see this again. But in each one of these areas, you'll see five to 10 different uh, strategies. There are many, many more. These are just the top strategies that I've used and with businesses and uh, that can be used. There are many more. So under leads, for instance, I want you to pay attention. Joint ventures, the second one down, is my absolute favorite strategy to use for startups and businesses that have been in business for 15, 20 years. Joint ventures is one of the best ways to not only generate leads, but also to improve or to increase your profits without you putting any more time into your business. It's an amazing strategy. And then digital marketing, the second to the last there, remember that one, we're gonna come back to the digital marketing, talk a little bit more about that. Actually, we're gonna talk a lot more about digital marketing because that's the flavor of the, year right now that's you should be doing digital marketing um after you generate a lead these are several ways that you can uh, convert those leads to paying customers and there, again there are many more ways to do that when you convert the lead now you have to know how to serve that customer multiple times i had a recent conversation uh, uh, with a cement pump operator out here in orlando and after talking with him for a little bit, we decided we we're going to get some testimonials from his past clients. So we said, well, we need the list of your past clients that you've served so we can go get some video testimonials and we can put them on your Facebook page and your website and all this kind of stuff. His answer to his reply was, well, I don't have any. Um, we're like, well, you have clients, right? Yeah, I've served many clients, but I delete their information once I'm done with the job. I have no reason to keep that information. I was like, oh my goodness, man, are you serious? So I literally sat there and shared with him at least nine different ways that this he could serve those past clients multiple times and generate additional revenue and profits and continue serving those clients. And that blew his mind. He had been in business for 18 years and had never considered those strategies. So you have to consider the multiple ways that you can serve your clients to generate revenue for your business. And there are so many ways to do that and it changes per, you know, it varies per industry. Now, once you do the transaction that generates revenue, how are you going to convert that revenue into profits and be able to get more and more profits as your business grows? There are multiple strategies to do that as well. So here's the problem. The problem is one, this is a lot of information and I get that. You're drinking through a water hose. This is a recording. You can go back and watch this again, but I want to ease your mind right now. We're going to get a lot. It gets a lot more complicated, but before we go any further, what I want to point out is that you do not have to implement strategies, all of these strategies in each one of these categories, subcategories that is in the foundations, leads, conversions, transactions, and profits. You do not have to implement the strategies in each one of those categories. The question becomes, which ones do you need to implement or should you implement? That's the lowest hanging fruit. That's the big question. So, and, and, and it gets even more complicated because you remember what I was telling you about digital marketing under generating leads? Just when you look at digital marketing, you have to consider all of the aspects of digital marketing. And there's more than this. This is just what I could fit on the screen, quite frankly. There's many more social media. There's many more paid advertising options. If you're going to have a website, which you should have a website, many websites that I look at are not mobile optimized, which means I've seen websites that were literally built in the 90s. And if I try to find their website on my cell phone or on my smartphone, it's just a white page. Here's the thing, 70% on average, 70% of the people that are gonna visit your website are gonna do so on their smartphone. And if they go there and it's clunky and they have to move the screen around to try to see, and it's, it's not optimized for mobile, you're going to lose that customer. They're gonna to go to the competitor. Look at social media. All the options for social media alone, you got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat and so on and so forth. It just keeps going and going. There's so many different options and it varies per country as well. So when 
somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I want to do your marketing for you. And we should start with Facebook. You know, there's so many other things to consider and you have to consider all of these different areas before you even get started with any marketing, before you even get started generating leads and somebody's coming to you or you even considering, I need to do some marketing and I'm going to start right here with Facebook ads. And then you're going to do pay per click, which is usually a terrible idea for most businesses because the return on, on a investment isn't high enough. Your profit margins aren't, aren't there yet. And they probably never will be for your industry. So I'm like, really? All of this stuff to consider and you want to start with Facebook ads. Now, don't get me wrong. Social media marketing and digital marketing, absolutely powerful, very powerful. But if you don't have the right strategies in place, you have to, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. You're going to be spending thousands of dollars and wasting a lot of time because you don't fully understand your playing field. You have to know this. You have to know what your entire playing field is. And this is just part of your playing field. All of this is just part of your playing field. The question is, how do you know what part of your playing field do you need to be focusing on? Well, that's the solution that I have for you today. That's what I'm gonna, that, that's why I'm so excited. I'm super excited to share this with you because nobody else is doing this. By the way, nobody else is using a presentation like this either, right? You have to be innovative. You have to make your business stand out. You have to know your market dominating position. You have to have your unique selling prop, your selling point. You have to be able to clearly articulate that into your marketing. You have to make sure that your financials are set in such a way that you're not spending too much money and you're destroying your, your margins. You have to not discount unless it's absolutely done correctly and you know your margins and you know that discounting is going to bring you more profit than what it's worth. That's where many businesses are failing that, you know, the 40% discounts, they want business. So they're going to do a discount and you're, you're not even breaking even and you're wondering why you're going broke. So how does the average business owner, you, or even the ordinary coach and consultant out there, how are they able to see and understand your entire playing field without getting fooled by the latest search engine optimization or social media trend, which distracts you from being strategic? Here's how. We've got over 20 years of experience and innovation in 100 different industries in 24 different countries at this point. We have complete strategies and marketing campaigns that we've already implemented with many different industries that are working. And as business strategists within our network, we're always talking with each other to find out which ones are working best in which industries so that we can help each other out. Let me give you an example. Say for instance, that when you go to the, uh, to the doctor, you go to the hospital. And remember, I was in the medical field for 25 years. And when I had a patient sit down in front of me, I would have my computer there. And this is later, even back in the day, we used to do everything by pencil. We had an algorithm and we would ask a question. And if the answer is no, we go, we ask this next set of questions. If the answer is yes, we ask this next set of questions and we drill all the way down to the bottom of the algorithm. And it comes up with a possible diagnosis, maybe two or three different diagnoses and follow on treatments. But I don't think I, I, we never stayed right there. We would say, excuse me to the patient. I'll be right back. We walk down the hall. We go to talk to the head physician that's on duty that day or the uh, physician's assistant or the head medic, whoever happens to be there. And we say, here's the, here's the, uh, the you know, the, uh, what the patient is presenting with. And here's the diagnosis that I believe, or the, the, the diagnosis that I think it is. Here's some possible treatments that I think we should do. And the head physician will say, you're spot on, go do that. Or they'll say, nope, I've seen this before. We need to go this route, go back and ask a couple more questions, these specific questions, and then we'll have a definitive answer and we'll move forward that way. It's the same thing with this. When I'm sitting down in front of you as the business owner and I'm doing an assessment on your business and we drill down and we find the money that you're leaving on the table using very conservative numbers, I'll show you in just a minute. And then I take that information, I go to the network 
especially if it's an industry I'm not super familiar with. Now, if it's an industry I've been working with time and time again, like bathroom remodelers, kitchen remodelers, and the you know contract subcontractors and the trades, no problem. But even then, I still want to make sure that I'm doing the best thing for you, the business owner. So I pass it out to the network, and we all learn from each other. And somebody's always going to come in and say, this is the strategy you absolutely must do in this situation. So it's absolutely brilliant to be able to have this profit acceleration software because it's algorithmic. It allows me to find the answers and it lets you see in a graph and see the numbers that you're leaving on the table by not implementing them. Now, this one here, the profit acceleration software is mostly a little bit of marketing, but mostly business operations. Now, let me show you this. We literally just launched this last week at the time of the recording of this video. So I don't have all the beautiful graphs and everything. This is the digital marketing assessment. And this digital marketing software, digital acceleration software is absolutely powerful. What it gives us the opportunity to do is to find your current location, your destination of where you want to be, and then your roadblocks that are stopping you from getting to that destination and allows us to build a roadmap. So let's start over here with where you are. I ask a series of questions. This can literally take 10 minutes. And I ask a series of questions about your search engine optimization. Are you happy with it? Do you feel that it's working for your business? On a scale from one to 10, what do you think? Generally, they'll say one, two, three, or four. Never, very seldom do I get the answer that's very high. Um, the metrics and KPIs, so on and so forth. I get this. And this lets us know where you are with your digital marketing. And then from that, we're able to go through and actually do an assessment on the business with other categories. And I'll show you over here, for instance, in search engine optimization, I will share an example of what we did with another business model and say, based on this information, how do you feel this would impact your business? And they'll be like, oh my God, I'm not doing this at all. My website's super slow. People come and they go, they're not buying anything. They're not sticking around. They're not calling us for a free consultation or an estimate or anything like that. So I would say at least 80 to 100%. That's the business owner's number, 80 to 100%. And I'll say, chances are that's probably true because we've done that before for other businesses. But for the sake of this assessment, I wanna keep the numbers very conservative so what do you say we go with five? And they'll be like, that's crazy. You're ridiculous. It's going to be more than that. And I'll go, okay, I'll go as high as 10. So I'll put a 10 in there. And you see, this is a, the profit increase, 54,552 is just from this one strategy. Then I'll do the same thing for digital marketing, social media, um, content marketing uh, that I didn't even do up here in content marketing, didn't even do that one. And based off of this particular model right here, you can see that this is not a true business. The name is different, but the numbers are absolutely true um, from this business. They had $800,000 in revenue. The expected increase after doing this assessment over here and not even doing all of the categories, keeping the numbers very conservative, expected increase is almost half a million dollars in revenue. Then you see the next to that, the current profit uh, total profit impact up top is 203,000. That's a 508% impact on this one business right here. Then from that, we're able to build the roadmap. The software tells us, and my experience will also t tell me as well, that this is the order in which we need to implement the strategies. And we do this in six week sessions. And obviously these don't overlap. The software doesn't, isn't designed for this to overlap, but many of these are going to overlap. But this shows our six to 12 month strategy in our roadmap. It's all laid out here for us. There's no guessing on your part. There's no guessing on my part. It lets you see how much money you're leaving on the table very conservatively by not having these strategies put in place in your business. Then all we have to do is put the strategies in place. My team and I have these skills and the uh, experience to do that for you. So that is my presentation. And I even forgot to mention the name of this presentation. What I refer to this as is the incremental business growth, exponential results, small little growth and changes, just small little changes in each one of these areas. Tiny little changes in each one of these areas makes a huge impact in your business. Like I showed you over here, when you see 
that the solution has tiny little impacts, 5% impact, 6% impact, 10% impact, but look at the results with tiny little, tiny little um, incremental growth in each one of those areas. We just gotta figure out which areas to grow your business in, which areas are gonna make the biggest impact, which of these areas do you need to start implementing in your business so that you can see the entire playing field of your business and start running your business like a business and being having so much more confidence because listen your business is extremely important to you your family your community your employees and everyone else that's touched by your business the the people that you serve people rely on your services and your products it's imperative that you keep the doors open and it's even more imperative that you thrive because I'll bet you if you were able to thrive in your business, then you would be a person of abundance and you would pay it forward and give even more to your community. You'd be able to give your time. You'd be able to give your treasures and your talents and share that with everybody else around you. That's what I want you to do. That's what, and you can do whatever you want to do, obviously when you're in abundance and when you're in, when you're, your, your business is thriving. When you have abundance, you have choices. And when your business is thriving, you sleep better at night. Your relationship with your family is better. Your relationship with your community is better. And you don't worry so much when tragic events happen in the world. Imagine that. That's what you can have. Let's sit down and have an assessment. The first thing I wanna do is have a 10 minute conversation with you, just 10 minute conversation. And I want to share with you from that 10 minute conversation, you and I will know if we can go on to do the assessment and even the assessment, there's no sales. There's no sales in the 10 minute um, conversation. And in the assessment, once I show you the assessment, it's on you. You can do whatever you want to do. We can work together or not, or you can go off and implement the strategies yourself. Completely up to you. I just want to give you the ability to see your entire playing field. Deal? All right. I'm Ole Carmichael. I am your business and marketing strategist. I'm here for you. So let's have a conversation. And if you know anybody who needs to see this, be abundant in your actions today. Pay it forward. Share this video with others. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.